Hey guys and welcome back to another video tutorial. Today we're going to be editing in the style of Benjamin Hardman or at least trying to, trying our best with the images that we can get. Um, so you can see he has a very, very distinctive, unique style. Um, you can see he's got very, very dark, crushed, faded blacks, um, semi-vibrant greens and lots of blues and whites in his images. Now he predominantly takes his photos in uh, places like Norway uh, and Iceland. But today we're going to be trying to edit a photo in his style. But before we do, it'd be great if you could go check me out on Instagram. I am Sebastian underscore JWB. It'd be great if you could go follow me on Instagram um, and also my brother, which is Matthew underscore GKB. Um, also, if you want to check out our preset packs, go check out our website. The link will also be in the description along with our Instagram links. Okay, so this is the photo we're going to be editing today and we're going to be trying to edit it to look something along the lines of this or with much brighter um, blues like here and here and also here and here and here. So this is a style, this is what we're going for today. Um, so first of all you want to come onto your basics panel and we're just going to grab the highlights and we're just going to brighten up those highlights to about plus 60. Um, he has very very bright highlights in his images um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We're then going to get the shadows. Uh, lift up the shadows slightly and then get the blacks and just crush those blacks really far probably about minus 75 and uh, maybe even minus 80 um, really far we're dropping those blacks we're then going to get the whites and we're going to lift up the whites quite a bit as well to about plus 60. So we're just doing a dramatic change here to the colours we're going to get the contrast and we're going to whack the contrast up to about plus 30 as well. Um, as for the temperature he has very blue images so we're going to drag the temperature down about 4800 Kelvin and then we're going to get the tint and we are going to introduce I think the best way of doing this is introducing a slight bit of magenta plus 10 plus 12 is a good bet. Clarity he doesn't have much clarity in his images so we're going to drop the clarity down um, I'm just dragging it down here to about minus 37 minus 40 simply because we don't want to overdo the contrast as well by dragging the clarity up um, now if we get the vibrance we're going to drop the vibrance down we're going to drop the saturation down as well uh, vibrance probably is about minus 10 minus 15 saturation is about minus 10 as well okay so that's it for the basics panel and we may come back to that in a while so we're going to come onto the tone curve here and we're just going to create a standard s curve you're going to lift up those highlights probably around there um, we don't want it to be too bright because then you just lose all the colors in the highlights um, we may end up having to drop off the highlights a bit later on to bring back some of that color and then we're going to get the shadows and we're going to drop the shadows there and then we're going to come down here and we are just going to drag it up and introduce a lot of fade into those shadows um, and we may even drop off like that there. Um, so already we're beginning to get that really dark crushed black fades that he has in his images. So if you look down here for example on this image, so if you look at the blacks in this image here and look at the blacks in our image here, we're beginning to get some similar style. I think we probably over faded it so I'm going to drag that down a little bit. I'm actually going to come back up to the basic panel and I'm just going to increase those shadows just a touch so we can see some more of the greens down here and I'm going to get the highlights and just drop those off a little bit more so we can see more of those blues. Okay so I'm going to close up the tone curve now and then I'm going to come down to HSL. There are a few things we can do the hues in the reds, oranges and yellows, uh, well specifically the reds and oranges we're going to leave alone because there aren't really reds and oranges in this photo. Um, as for the yellows and greens that's going to be affecting the trees down here so if I drag it to the left you can see it makes those trees more brown. I'm going to drag it to the right and I want to make these trees as green as I can. So I'll be drag the orange to the left and the yellows all the way up. Get the greens, you can see if I drag the greens to the left it makes them sort of more orange. If I drag them to the right it makes them more green. So I'm going to drag them all the way to the right with the yellows and the greens and then I'm actually going to skip saturation for a second and come down to luminance I'm going to brighten up those yellows and brighten up those greens just so we can see more of those trees um, oranges as well drag those up a little bit as well and in fact I'm going to click on this slider here and we're going to come over to these trees select those and I'm just going to drag it slide it to the right which then basically selects that color and tries to brighten it as well and you can see here what it's done is it's increased the blues um, so obviously there's lots of blues in these trees over here and also then it's brightened up the sky but that's perfectly fine um, and then what we're going to do is come to the aquas and blues um, and we are you can see if I drag it to the left we get very very greeny blues so I'm going to counteract that by dragging the aquas all the way to the right and probably just taking off actually a little bit on the blues if I go too far to the right we get those purpley blues so we don't really want that so I reckon about there is probably a good bet then I'm going to get the purple slider and I'm going to drag the purple slider down to the left 
and then the magenta slider probably also down a bit as well. So we press the backslash key, that's the that's the before, um, and then this is the after, after using the backslash key. So we're beginning to get somewhere towards what we're looking for. There's a very drastic change in the hues. Now here's really, here is where it's really gonna come to shape is in the saturation. So we really wanna desaturate these greens to make that moody kind of look. So come to the green slider, and we're just gonna drag down the saturation there, and the yellows, we're gonna drag down the saturation there, and also the oranges as well, maybe the yellows a little bit more just lower that saturation. I'm gonna brighten those yellows up a little bit more as well. Uh, the blues, I'm gonna drag the saturation down in the blues as well. Not too much, about minus 20 should do the trick minus 25 and um, the aquas I'm going to increase the saturation to plus 100 just to kind of bring back some of the blues in the corners of the river here or sort of the lake and also in the sky as for the purples I'm going to drop off the saturation to minus 100 because you can see if I increase it too much we get too much blue in the image so I'm going to decrease that to minus 100 and the magentas I'm going to decrease as well so you can see here this photo here has very dark blues in the oceans um, so we have two choices here one we can go for dark blues or we can go for the really bright white blues that he has uh, in this photo here or here for example so we're going to try both of those I'm going to come down to luminance I'm going to get the blues and I'm going to drop those down and the aqua's down, and uh, probably bring the blues up a little bit. Um, I don't really like the look of that, I don't really like what's going on there, so what I'm gonna do is brighten, I think, brighten up the aquas, and lower the blues slightly, just to bring back a little bit of contrast in the water there. As for the purples, I'm thinking brighten those purples up to plus 100, and the magentas as well, brighten those up. We can try and mess around with the reds, I don't think this is gonna do anything, no. Okay, so that's it for the HSL slide, I'm just gonna close that up now, and then I'm gonna come down to split toning. Uh, if I press Alt on my keyboard, you can see when I drag it up, the colors that I'm gonna to add to the highlights. Um, I'm looking for those nice blues, sort of icy blues that I want to add. Um, so I'm thinking somewhere around 205 would look quite nice. Then I'm gonna get the saturation and I'm gonna drag that saturation up to plus 10, just to introduce that color into the highlights. And then I'm gonna to come to the shadows and I'm gonna drag this up and I'm looking for those greens, I think, for the uh, shadows, um, maybe even greeny blues like that. And then I'm gonna drag the saturation up to about plus 10 and see what effect that has. Um, so that's 146 in the shadows. I could actually drag it up a little bit more. I'm thinking just a matter of preference really what you think works for your image. I'm thinking somewhere about 190 I think is probably the best bet here. Maybe drop the saturation off a little bit to minus 10, sorry, to about plus eight. Uh, so if I turn off the split turning, turn it on again, you can kind of see a slight change going on there, especially in the shadows, and also it brings back some color in the highlights. Okay, so I'm gonna close up the split turning there. If I press the backslash key, you can see the before, and if I press it again, you can see the after. Um, and then if I go back onto his page, we're beginning to get somewhere, we're beginning to start to look something like his style. The problem we've got here is our photo really isn't perfectly identical to the style of his photos. It's not in the right location. Um, so we're going to have to do our best. So we can drag that there. If you do notice on a lot of his photos, he has these very, very bright highlights at the top of his images. Um, a lot of them, there are there is no detail in the sky. So what I'm going to do is come onto here. I'm going to get the gradient tool, and I'm literally just going to click on the sky and drag it down. And I'm going to double click an effect to reset everything back to zero. I'm going to come to exposure, sorry, highlights, drag the highlights all the way up to plus 100, drag the exposure up to plus 100, I'm going to get the clarity down to uh, minus 100, sorry, but I'm going to drag it down to about minus 50, and this is just going to try and introduce a little bit of haze into the sky. Um, if I decrease the saturation as well to minus 100, and then I'm just going to actually fade it a little bit more, so I drag that down and then just move it up and try and place it to the correct place that I think works for this image. I reckon something like that seems to be working quite nicely. Um, I might just sort of twist it slightly, fade it out a little bit more, just bring it down. This is really going to take a lot of messing around with just to see roughly where you want to get it. But all we're trying to do is mimic the idea that there is fog in the sky. Um, so I may actually drop the clarity off a little bit more just to make it look a little bit more misty. You can mess around with the temperature and make it more blue if you wanted to. Now one thing that helps to make it sort of more hazy, more um, fog-like is to come down to the dehaze tool and just drag the dehaze down to minus 100. That just sort of fades it and makes it slightly more white and pale at the top. Drag it up and I'm just trying to again mimic the idea of this fog based layer of clouds at the top. Um, we are gonna have a little bit of issue. I think I might actually just take the exposure back a bit. I think it's a little bit over the top. And I think we're probably doing quite well there. So I'm gonna come over to this cropping tool. I'm gonna click on four by five. I'm just gonna click on custom. And I'm gonna try and make this photo, um, click on the lock here. And I'm gonna try and make this photo portrait if I can. 
um, just to see what it looks like. It may be that it doesn't work, but then I'm going to click done. So we've cropped the image into something that we think is slightly more suitable. Now, when you've got the faded up highlights in the top, um, it doesn't look so unnatural. It does look like there is a fog falling down on this area. So you can also come down to the gradient tool and also just uh, lift it up from the bottom. Double click an effect, reset everything to zero and then just drag down the exposure just to darken off the bottom of that image. So that's one thing you can do. I'm not gonna do that because I've spent a while um, making sure that these trees stand out that we have a bit of green going on here. Okay, so finally I want to come down to camera calibration. I'm gonna come down to green primary. I'm gonna get the saturation and I'm gonna drag that saturation up to about plus 40. And then I think that's probably it. I don't really wanna to do too much more to this image. Um, so you can see that I think is quite a good edit. I think it's kind of in his style. Obviously, again, we don't really have the same image that he is using. But if you look here, for example, you have those very faded white highlights um, up here and in fact what we can do is come up to the tone curve get this here and just fade off the whites just at the top to make it slightly more obvious um, you can even come down to the blue primary um, and just increase the blues in the highlights if you wanted to ever so slightly and then just drag that back in something like that there up to you it depends what you're really going for and um, that's just editing the very minor details but i think that's it for today's video and um, what you can then do is just come to the plus button and save it as a preset so what i might go ahead and do is create a preset pack um, if you guys are interested there will be a preset pack probably down below in the description if i end up making it so keep your eyes peeled down there in the description um, and see what you think. So one thing I wanted to demonstrate is once you've created a preset, you can then come to a new image um, and then you can just come down to your preset and just click it and it will then apply it directly onto that image. So this is just the base preset that has been added. And um, you can see we have his style again, those greens and those very icy blues. Um, here, this fade out at the top really doesn't seem to be working too much. So one thing you can do is just turn it off completely. So we can see what that looks like. Um, and I really think we're beginning to get somewhere with his style. Um, in fact, if I turn it on again, what you can do is just try and do a slight minor amount at the top. So what I've done is I've got the um, gradient tool and I've just dragged it up some more to make the fade a little bit more, uh, increase the fade a little bit more, just to fade it out. And then you can just mess around with it at the top just to brighten up those highlights. Um, so we're just going to leave it at that for the time being. But there you are. That's what the preset would look like on another image. So again, if you guys are interested in this preset pack, do let me know down below and I will create it. And it will be on our website and it will probably be on sale for the first few days it's been released. Um, so keep your eyes checked out on the description down below. But that's it for you today, guys. I hope you did enjoy this video. I'll see you in the next one. Live long and prosper.